my last video last year <laughs> was alive. And shout out to everybody who joined, that was great, it was amazing. We were talking about the things that we want to leave in 2023. It's now 2024. Do you know what we should bring into 2024? Inconvenience. Do you know what's missing from deep, meaningful friendships? Inconvenience. I want to resurrect the art of being inconvenienced. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're good, hope you're well. So we live in a time where pretty much everything can be convenient. You don't have to chop your onions or crush your garlic. Your groceries come to you. You can order something today and it arrives today. And so in a time where most things can be made convenient, pair that with a little bit of therapy culture, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the video. The question is, do we demand that our friendships be convenient too? Let's talk about it. For the purpose of this video, I wanna use two examples of inconvenience. I'm gonna talk about physical labor and emotional labor. Physical labor. So early last year, there was a bit of discourse happening on Twitter around whether or not you should ask your friends to pick you up from the airport. The tweet said, as an adult, don't ask your friends to pick you up from the airport. Use Uber, save a friendship. Now I thought, okay, this is a bit wild, but then I thought about and you should also think about your actual genuine response to that. How would you feel if your friend asked you to pick them up from the airport? That's like maybe an hour, a plus two hours there and back and Ubers and trains exist. How would you feel? Now think perhaps of your parents or your grandparents generation. Coming from an African point of view, when my mum, my aunties, my uncles traveled, they would pack an extra suitcase of things that are for other people. That suitcase would not come back with them. They would plan a shipment to go ahead of them and arrive again full of things for other people. They would have a whole crew of friends and family there waiting for them on arrival. And they would never stay in a hotel if they were going to a destination where family or friends live. In fact, it would be very offensive <laughs> if they stayed in a hotel where they have friends or family in that city. And although I know times have changed and I'm not proposing we go to those lengths and sometimes our parents probably should have said no. It's just, just think about that compared to maybe our response to that discourse around asking your friends to pick you up from the airport. Do you notice a difference? Or what about hosting? What about home visits? Back in the day, my mum would always have food on the stove just in case somebody popped by. Now, the thought of giving up my weekend, let alone random times in the day to host people, fills me with a little bit of stress. And then let's not forget the old age, the age old, age old, the old age? <laughs> nah. Let's not forget the age old meme of, you know, that classic, oh, so secretly happy that somebody has canceled the plans because now you can go back to bed and do nothing. It's a popular meme because we can all relate. Like we, for some reason, really love canceled plans. And with those two examples, it's very interesting to see how the definition of inconvenience has changed and also our view on it has changed. And then there's emotional labor. I referenced therapy culture a bit earlier in the video. Therapy has become more popular. According to NHS Digital, referrals to talking therapy were up 25% last year versus the year before. And it only takes a really short scroll on social media to see how much sort of therapy content or therapy coded content there is online at the moment. As a society, we have become more open when it comes to talking about mental health, which is great. We're not bottling up our emotions anymore. We're just seeking help to overcome traumas and just become more well-rounded people. It's all good. But what if it isn't? I say this in probably like 99% of my videos, but what if the pendulum has swung so far on the other end that it's veered on some unhealthy bits? In looking at ourselves more, have we become more selfish? Whilst getting in touch with our feelings, have our feelings become our God? It's not as far-fetched as it sounds and it wouldn't be the craziest theory because societal truths not too long ago were most commonly based in like a religious foundation. And for some of us, they still are. And if not religion, then just like societal norms, expectations, we didn't really veer too far away from that. But there has definitely been a decline in people practicing organized religion. And there's also been a decline in just, you know, societal norms norms, expectations, rules. And so that foundation had to be replaced with something. And some would argue that that something is us. Our feelings, our needs, our wants, our desires, they have become our foundation, our facts, our North Star, our God. And so we're no longer seeking therapy or advice in order that we can be, you know, well-rounded people so that we can be better contributors to society. We're doing it so that we can be happy. And being happy is not bad. In fact, probably a happy member of society is 
a better member of society. But what happens when that's not the case? Bringing it back to relationships, what happens when you stop picking up phone calls because you're mentally tired or you feel like you just don't have the capacity to be there for a friend or you just constantly cancel plans because you would rather go home because that's what you feel you want to do. Now, these things are real and they are all valid excuses, but what happens if we persistently give in to those feelings? And what happens if we leave no room, no room at all for occasional discomfort, occasional inconvenience? And what happens if we feel justified in always, keyword, always prioritizing our feelings? Naturally, over time, we will see a lack of growth and depth in those friendships. And that's because, not to sound like some hustle culture, motivational, that's because no growth happens without inconvenience. That convenient workout is probably not gonna get you to your goals. Character growth often, most times happens off the back of an uncomfortable season, whether it's self-imposed or something's happened to you, growth usually happens on the other side of that. Yes, I can use chopped onions and crushed garlic when my goal is just to cook a quick meal, but if I'm learning to be a chef or I'm trying to improve in my cooking, I should probably chop those onions from scratch. At least until I'm proficient and I can move on to the convenient version. And the same applies to our relationships. If we only engage in friendships in a way that's convenient for us all the time, we'll likely miss so many opportunities for growth and depth in that relationship. And on the topic of therapy culture, has therapy speech and our perceived knowledge and understanding and self-awareness, has it caused us to reduce our relationships down to these like corporate accounts that need to be managed in a corporate way? Last year, there was a viral video posted on TikTok um, and it was a therapist telling us how to break up with a friend. <laughs> run, run, run the tape. I've noticed you've been withdrawn and haven't wanted to hang out recently. What's going on? I've treasured our season of friendship, but we're moving in different directions in life. I don't have the capacity to invest in our friendship any longer. Is it something I did? This feels really sudden. I get that it might be hard to understand, but I've been reevaluating many areas of my life recently, including my ability to be a good friend to you. I just want to be honest and upfront so I don't disappoint your expectations. I'm sorry if this feels painful and confusing. I wish you all love and success. This video got a lot of backlash. Um, you could probably see why. And although I'm sure it was meant as just a bit of a template, you know, to give you guidance and not that you should sit down with your friend and say these things verbatim, the backlash I think came because the robotic, overly therapized nature of it just felt very cold. Breaking up with a friend may be necessary, yes. And yes, it has to be approached delicately and you should probably think about what you're gonna say before you say it. But it also involves a lot of nuance and probably a lot of unexplained feeling and two sides to the story. And so it's okay if it's a little bit messy as you try to make sense of it. It's probably not gonna be convenient and trying to make it convenient with this like rehearsed HR type speech will probably do more harm than good. So should you always be on hand to collect your friend from the airport? No, not necessarily, probably not. Should you pick up that long distance friend who's traveled far to see you? Or that friend who's returning from a family member's funeral? Or that friend who just loves acts of service? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I imagine that that inconvenience to you would mean the world to them and it's okay to do it for that reason. Everything I've mentioned, I've done. So I get it, I'm guilty of it. And there has to be room for context and self-analysis always. Maybe maybe you should ignore those calls because you're overstimulated. Maybe you are burnt out and at capacity. Maybe this is a season for you to stay indoors and just not be there for everybody. We don't have to operate in extremes, but this video is to simply say, think about it. Before running to our default excuses, ask yourself if this time, on this occasion, you can be inconvenienced for the sake of others. Ask yourself, am I speaking long-term? A weekend off can seem great in the moment after a year. That is 52, 52 free weekends, 52 missed opportunities and probably a faded relationship. And if you're like me and you're a person of faith, then consider John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Love is inconvenient. That's all I have to say. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Am I shouting rubbish? Or do you agree? As always, let me know in the comments down below. Check out some similar videos here. If you've made it this far, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.